Hello everybody, welcome back to Tom Reads Things. My name's Tom, I hope you're all very well. Um, and welcome to the first video of 2020. Today I'm having a look back at the last 12 months and I'm going to have a look at my top 10 books of 2019. So, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas time, Yuletide period. Um, I had a wonderful time, it was bloody lovely. I thought I'd give you all a bit of a rest from me after Vlogmas, um, so you didn't have to see this for a while. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just, I've just had a really nice relaxing break and I've done loads of reading and I've got some really exciting, uh, well, they're exciting for me, reading plans for 2020, which I will share with you all very soon. Uh, what I thought I would do today is have a look back at uh, my top 10 favourite books books of 2019. So without further ado, let's begin. At number 10, I have a book that I actually got for Christmas. So it's a very, very, very recent read for me. And that is The Wonderful Lanny by Max Porter. So I, um, I, I didn't know anything about this book before I read it. I'd seen a couple of people talk about it on their channels. I know Simon had really enjoyed it. Um, uh, but I, I came into this with complete, you know, open mind. Didn't, I didn't, um, didn't have any preconceptions about it at all, which I think was fantastic. So for anyone who doesn't know, Lanny Lanny follows the story of a young boy and his family who live in a village in the English countryside and it follows the character of um, Dead Papa Toothwort who, uh, <laughs> who is this kind of spiritual green man figure almost, um, almost like a kind of pagan figure, spirit that, that kind of dwells in the village and in nature um, and he listens in on conversations in the village and he especially listens into the conversations and the thoughts had by um, the young boy. Uh, this this young boy, you come to understand, um, is, is different from other young boys, um, which, which is kind of portrayed as a positive thing in this book, which is really great. He has um, an eye for art and he goes to be taught by an art teacher who is local to the village, a famous art teacher who's local to the village. Um, and then in the second half of the book, everything is flipped on its head and um, a lot changes and it becomes really, really, really gripping. So this book was just absolutely fantastic. It completely knocked me for six. And I love the way that some of it is written, especially in, you can see here, especially uh, in kind of dead Papa Toothworts listening into the conversations, it's written in kind of a weird swirly way to represent the different conversations that are happening. And it's a gorgeous cover as well, look at that. So yes, I absolutely adored Lanny. Was not expecting after Christmas to come up with any new books that were gonna be in my top 10 for the year, but this did it. Lanny by Max Porter, loved it. At number nine, we have a fantastic book, which I read as part of Victober this year, and that is the absolutely wonderful North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. So this was the first Gaskell book that I had ever read, and I was super, super, super excited to read some Elizabeth Gaskell, and this did not disappoint. I know this is Katie from Books and Things. I know this is her like second favorite novel of all time, um, uh, behind our mutual friend. So I, I went into this with, with high expectations and really, really, really enjoyed it. It follows the story of a young woman who uh, whose family falls on sort of hard times and um, and they are forced to move from the south of England to the north um, of England and uh, what she finds there is industrialization she finds you know she comes to understand what it is to be um, to be poor and to have to work hard for what you have and she kind of comes to uh, she, she meets lots of different characters and understands their struggles um, with uh, unions and with uh, mill bosses and things like that and it's just a fantastic representation of industrialization in Victorian literature and I just love Elizabeth Gaskell's writing style I know this will certainly not be the last Gaskell that I read some of the lines that I forget the main character's name even it's just absolutely crazy what is her name Margaret Hale. Um, some of the one-liners that Elizabeth Gaskell gives Margaret Hale in this book are just absolutely brilliant it's she makes her such a hilarious but such a strong character it's oh loved it at number eight we have a book that i read early on in the year and has stayed with me throughout the rest of the year and that is queen victoria daughter wife mother widow by the wonderful should be dame in my opinion lucy worsley um so this is a biography of queen victoria but it picks out a day um 
it picks out certain days in her life. It doesn't kind of give a running commentary of everything that happened in her life. It picks out certain days during um, her life that represent the different parts of her life, whether she was a daughter, a wife, a mother, or a widow. And it goes into real detail on those days. And I just, I just found it so interesting. Lucy Worsley writes biographies like their novels, and it was just, oh, it was fantastic. And look at that cover as well. Oh, strong cover. Um, so yeah, I really, really, really enjoyed this. I cannot wait to read more Lucy Worsley. I have her biography that she did of Jane Austen, where she explores Jane Austen's um, life through the different homes that she lived in. And I'm going to read that for Jane Austen July this year. So really, really, really excited to get to that. But yes, at number eight, Queen Victoria, daughter, wife, mother, widow. At number seven, we have an absolutely beautifully written book. And this book I absolutely adored because not only is it a fantastic story, but it was also my first ever buddy read. Um, I read this with Simon from Savage Reads earlier in the year, and it is the brilliant As Meat Loves Salt by Maria McCann. So again, I went into this with no preconceptions. I didn't really know what it was about. Um, and it follows the story of a, a man in the 1600s in the Civil War in England and his um, how he gets... Uh, how he basically finds himself uh, in the in the throngs of this war um, and also the people that he meets and someone that he falls in love with as well and it, it, the story then takes him back out of the war into the city of London and explores in a lot more detail this relationship that he has with this other character and their romance that kind of blossoms from there and the onlookers onto that romance and people kind of saying oh you know are they seeing each other aren't they it was it was just bloody brilliant there's there's so much more to this book than I can say in just a couple of minutes on this video um and it was a real 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 treat to read this with Simon um he uh, we were at kind of different places in the book as we were going through but it didn't matter at all we just had a right old laugh reading this together and and it, yeah, I just, I highly, highly, highly recommend this. It is absolutely beautifully written. Some of the bits in the war scenes can feel a bit long, but I, 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 I think that that it helped to, it was the kind of yin and yang of the war and then the period set outside the war, which helped to balance it out a bit. So yeah, I really, really, really loved this. That's why it's in my top 10. At number six is a book that I read not so long ago and it has stayed with me ever since and that is Greta Thunberg's uh, No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference. This is an exquisite collection of her speeches that she has given around the world recently over the last kind of 12 months or so um, and it just it highlights the, the most important issue facing our generation and our time um, which is obviously the, the the climate crisis that we that we are facing. And although there's a lot of repetition in this book because she says a lot of the same things in her speeches, which is you know fair enough, um, it never loses its power. It never loses its punch. It never loses its um, simplicity and its straightforwardness. The thing I love about Greta Thunberg, the things that she says and the things that she writes in her speeches. And I'm aware that she doesn't that she's not the only person writing her speeches, and she's she's said that that's you know she's she's made that quite obvious and quite plain. I think, sorry, my clock going off in the background. Um, I think uh, you know she. One of the things I love about her is she doesn't try and mince her words. She doesn't try and coat her words in something other than what they are. It's a very, very, very simple message that she is putting forward in her speeches. And the simplicity of her writing helps to put that forward and it helps to not dilute the message that she is giving. So yes, it's an incredibly small book. It's the smallest book on my list. It is a mere 68 pages. So do give this a read if you haven't already. No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference by Greta Thunberg. At number five, we have Wakenhurst by Michelle Paver. I absolutely adored this book. I'm gonna stop saying that because I loved all of these books. Um, but I loved it because of where it's set and the tension and the atmosphere that this book creates around its location. So this book is set in the Fens um, in Cambridgeshire, uh, where, where I live. I live in the Fens. And um, it, for me, that it kind of made this book all more special. It follows the story of a young girl in Edwardian England 
and um, her mother dies in childbirth. That's not a spoiler because that happens like literally in the first chapter. Um, her mother dies in childbirth for, uh, whilst giving birth to her younger brother, I think it is. <coughs> um, and uh, she's then raised by her father who is quite cold and quite distant. Um, and one day she, uh, one day they find um, uh, in the church, in the grounds of the home where they live, they find something painted on a piece of wood there and it changes everything. Um, I, I, I can't really give too much away about this book, but it's, it's kind of told from the perspective of the young girl when she's grown up talking to a reporter um, about her life. And it's just, oh, it's so atmospheric. If you're looking for something thrilling, um, something that is just gonna, that is, I hate to use this term, but a page turner. If you're looking for something that's gonna make you not want to put a book down, this is the one for you. Wakenhurst by Michelle Paver. Just, oh, utterly, utterly, utterly brilliant. At number four on this list, we have the utterly sublime On Earth We Are Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. So I read this in the summer when I was on holiday and I read it in like two or three sittings. I could not put it down. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, I don't read a huge amount of literary or modern contemporary fiction, but this has made me want to read so much more. Um, this follows the story of a Vietnamese um, refugee family living in the States, and it kind of looks back in vignettes uh, as to as to what that family went through during the Vietnam War. And it also follows the story of the young boy of this family, um, who uh, and his kind of life trying to grow up in an America that he doesn't really feel like he fits into, and the relationships that he um, that he has with with a very specific person um, in this novel. And what I love about it is the fact that it will, it, you'll be going along, I've said this before on this channel about this book, you'll be going along with the story and everything will be fine. And then it will go, and it will be, it will be like, it will be very cinematic and it will be almost like it goes into slow motion and it will be, it, Ocean Wong will describe in very explicit detail, amazing, elements and scenes that the main character goes through in this book. It could be some milk being spilt on a kitchen table and it will last a couple of pages, but it will be the most intricate, beautiful, sublime writing you'll ever read. Um, or it could be like him looking at his mum down at the end of the garden and kind of how he how he sees his mum. It's just, it's hard for me to explain without you reading it, but just trust me on this one. This is brilliant. I adored this book and cannot, cannot, cannot wait to read more by Ocean um, Vuong. I loved this. So we're in the top three. Are you excited? I am. At number three, we have a book that I read very recently, and that is Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. Oh, this book, it got me. It got me here. Um, I did this as a buddy read with the lovely Emily over at Novel Novels. I'll link her channel down below. Um, it was just, I read this uh, kind of towards the end of the year. And I'm quite glad that I did because I do feel like it's a bit of a wintry book. Um, it's set in Iceland in uh, the 19th century and it follows the story of um, the last people to be, um, to be executed uh, in Iceland. Um, and it follows the story of a, a young lady who is accused with two other gentlemen of murder. And she is sent to live with uh, a member of the kind of government, a member of the sort of Icelandic um, 19th century police force, if you will. Um, she's sent to live with him and his family. And it's about how she becomes intertwined in that family. And she tells her story to a priest that is sent to kind of guide her on the path of righteousness throughout her last couple of days. Um, uh, and days and weeks and that's how the kind of story unfolds of how she got to where she was and it's just do you know what for me the ending of this book is what makes it it's it's beautiful the whole way through but the ending I've never known anyone write fear in the way that Hannah Kent does in this book she because she, because she's writing about a character that's basically on death row there is obviously a strong focus on fear and Oh my God, the way she writes it is just utterly, utterly moving and brilliant and wonderful. And I would highly, highly recommend this. Please read this if you haven't already. Burial Rights by Hannah Kent is at number three. Top two, top two. So at number two, we have 
The Wonder by Emma Donoghue. Uh, this follows the story of a nurse who is sent to live with a family in rural 19th century Ireland. Um, the reason she is sent to live there is to keep an eye on a girl who is said to have not eaten for many, 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 many weeks. Um, and people are saying in the local community that it's a, it's a kind of, it's a miracle sent from God that she is able to exist without eating for all of this time. And the nurse is sent to make sure that she's not eating and to, you know, just to check it out. And the story uh, follows her relationship with this girl as she gets to know her, the relationship with the mother as she gets to know the mother. What's the mother doing? Is the mother doing anything? Is the girl really eating? Is she not eating? It's highly pressured this book it's like a pressure cooker that's what it's like um it's it only it only takes place over the course of a few weeks but it is highly packed with tension and pressure and atmosphere and and sort of heart racing sort of stuff really um i i cannot recommend this book enough it is utterly 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 brilliant i'm so glad that i heard about it from katie over at books and things her channel she really rates this book as well i'm so 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 pleased that i picked it up it has it has stayed with me for a long time this book and whenever someone is saying i'm looking for something to read that i really want to get into that's really going to make me go like oh, I, I i recommend this book it is just exquisite so yeah at number two the wonder by emma donoghue so here we are, we've arrived at number one. Um, and I'm sure this book won't come as a surprise uh, to, to, to many of you if, been, if you've been watching this channel for a while. But yes, at number one, my favorite book of 2019 is the utterly, utterly brilliant The Binding by Bridget Collins. So I haven't spoken about this book for a while on this channel because I felt like all I was doing was talking about it. But I read it at the very beginning of this year. I read it in, uh, sorry, last year. I read it in January 2019. And it has stayed with me ever since. Um, it's becoming a bit of a theme, really, that the first book that I read of the year is becomes my favourite book of that year. In 2018, the first book that I read of the year was The Mermaid of Mrs Hancock. And that was my favourite book of 2018. The first book that I read... Um, in January 2019 was The Binding by Bridget Collins and it's my favourite book of 2019. So what am I reading um, as my first book of 2020? Because um, it could end up being my favourite book of 2020. It's The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. So yeah, maybe that'll be my favourite book of 2020. But anyway, back to The Binding. This follows the story of Emmett, a young boy called Emmett. You don't really know when this story is set, but I kind of feel like it was set in Victorian England, um, early Victorian England. Um, and Emmett is sent off to become a bookbinder. So in this world that they live in, books are not um, perceived in the same way that books are perceived in our world. Um, books are memories that have been, bad memories that have been extracted from people's minds and put in books and bound up. And then they, once they're done, once that kind of magical process is done, they forget what was bound up in that book. Um, so Emmett goes to learn the craft of bookbinding. Um, and while he is learning that craft, he finds a book with his name on it. And he's kind of comes to understand that actually he must have had a bad memory extracted from his mind and put in this book. Um, and the story kind of goes on from there as he sort of understands what has been extracted from his mind and put in this book. Oh, I just love it. I just absolutely adore it. For me, this is a book that has stayed with me for the whole year because of the story. So whilst there is exquisite writing in this and I really love the characterization and I love the pacing, for me it's all about excellent storytelling and this is absolutely what this book is. I just, I can't rave about it enough. I don't know what else to say about it. Everyone please just read it. I love, love, love it. So yes, my favourite book of 2019 is The Binding by Bridget Collins. So thank you very much for joining me. Um, I hope you've all had a wonderful new year. Let me know what you're reading as your first book of 2020. Um, I've got a couple of a couple of videos planned uh, over the next uh, week or so. I'll be doing my uh, Christmas book haul and also my birthday book haul. It's my birthday in between Christmas and New Year. So I'll be uh, going through some of the books that I got for Christmas and my birthday. Um, and I will be uh, also looking at uh, my kind of January TBR, my December wrap up, but also a special project that I'm doing in 2020, um, which I will uh, let you know more about 
very soon. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and I will see you again soon. Thanks, bye.